The Division 2 open beta is out in just a few days, and after playing the private beta I found that there were a lot of common things we were used to doing a certain way in The Division 1, which have changed for the sequel. There are also a few new things that are worth knowing. So today I'll be covering some of the most important things I think you should know before playing The Division 2 open beta. Keep watching till the end and I'll show you a couple of fun things to do that not many people know about yet, as well as an easy way to win skirmish. It won't take you long to notice one of the most annoying parts of the game. It's something new to The Division 2 and initially seems like a pretty cool idea. Agents out in the open world that find themselves in a bit of a pickle are now able to call for help, which will send a notification to you asking for assistance. You can choose to follow this call and help the agent in need, but you'll soon find this to be quite the annoyance when you hear these calls every 5 minutes. My tip is turn this off as soon as you can. This can be done by opening the map and tabbing across in the menu to the left. You will then see an option on the bottom left corner of the screen to disable this. This does however reactivate every time you restart the game. So a recent addition in the tech test is a new option to completely disable this from the settings menu. Once you've made your way through the opening part of the beta and have unlocked the new base of operations, the White House, you then have to unlock the first settlement in order to be able to start unlocking your skills and perks. Skills and perks are unlocked with SHD Tech, which is earned through completing missions and playing the game, or farming for it in chests. Right off the bat you'll be able to unlock only one skill. To get a second you'll need to unlock the perk to enable this, and for this reason we'll look at all the best perks to unlock first. By default you'll need to unlock the secondary weapon perk first, but after that you unlock any or all of them in any order you wish. Some perks require you to upgrade them after that you've unlocked them, for example Backpack space is upgraded in increments, so it will need to be done multiple times to max it out. Others only require a single unlock. The three most important perks to unlock, in my opinion, after unlocking your secondary weapon, are your secondary skill, more armor plates, and extra grenades. Other good options are also backpack space and stash space, especially if you're planning on doing a lot of gear farming. Looking back at your skills, most of these are locked in the beta, but out of the few that are available, you're best to use the Fixer Drone and the Assault Turret. Like the med stations in Division 1, the Fixer Drone repairs armor over time, and is especially helpful with the tougher in-game enemies. You can also assign it to a teammate if they're needing assistance. The Assault Turret is handy for distracting NPCs, so they're less likely to flank you as much as they would without it. The other available skills aren't all that bad either, but I just found them to be a bit clunky to use in the heat of battle. Deconstructing for materials in the Division 2 is thankfully still a thing, although it's now done with an extra step, which caught a lot of people out initially in the private beta. Marking items as junk is still the same as we're used to in the Division 1, but when you're ready to deconstruct you need to venture into a second menu to do that. As an added bonus we can now finally select multiple items in the inventory, by holding down either Ctrl or Shift while selecting with the mouse. The weird thing is that you can't actually mark all selected items as junk, which seems to kind of defeat the purpose of doing this, however you can deconstruct multiple selected items so that really cancels out the need to mark them as junk first. This was all only tested on PC of course, and I'm not sure how this would be implemented on console, but I have seen comments where console players have found a way around to achieve this also. Endgame in my opinion is probably the funnest part of this beta, and you'll want to get there as fast as possible. It gives you the ability to replay all available content as a level 30 character, try out all three specializations available, collect and use some of the best gear and weapons available in the beta, as well as have a closer look at the new brand and gear sets available in the Division 2. Unpacking the open beta will be very similar to the private beta, in that the first day or so we will only be able to play with our base character, which can get to level 7. Through a server maintenance during the beta, endgame was then added. To access this in-game content though, you will need to complete the Jefferson Trade Center mission first, if you have not already done so. You will then gain access to the in-game mission that unlocks 3 level 30 characters on your account. This will be the invaded version of the Jefferson Trade Center. Selecting one of the 3 specializations in the startup menu will start the invasion mission. All beta content will also then be available at level 30, provided you're using one of the specialization characters. If you want to try another specialization later on, just log out again to select another character. 
also for all those Dark Zone players, once you've completed the Jefferson Trade Center mission, you'll get a DZ East introduction mission from the new Dark Zone NPC in the base of operations. The intro mission is a PvE only mission, which basically introduces you to the DZ. Once you've done that, you'll have full DZ PvP access. During the private beta, there was a lot of confusion surrounding ammo drops for specialization weapons. Some people were getting plenty of drops, others were getting none at all. Even in our own group, we were having these issues. Turns out it wasn't as confusing to get this ammo as we all thought. Basically, you just need to kill enemies with your chosen specialization weapon in order for the ammo to drop. Now this all sounds like it's quite obvious, but I think part of this confusion was that the 50 cal of the sharpshooter hits like a truck and is a lot easier to kill enemies leading to more ammo drops, whereas the other two don't feel anywhere near as powerful at this stage. So for each specialization, this is how you get more ammo drops. The sharpshooter gets ammo from headshot kills, demolitionist through explosive kills, and the survivalist through killing status affected enemies. If you've had enough of the end game content and feel like exploring the open world a bit more, you might come across some gated areas down alleyways or behind buildings, often filled with multiple loot bags or crates, and sometimes also SHD tech cache, which you need for unlocking perks and skills. At first glance, it looks like you aren't able to access these. You can't scale the fence and no prompts appear on screen when you walk up to it. On the gate you will see a large yellow bike padlock. To unlock the gate you simply need to shoot the lock to break it. Then you'll be able to open the gate and collect the loot. The children in the settlement will interact with you if they are not already busy playing games or drawing or doing other things. To get them to interact, simply stand in front of them if they are not doing anything and use one of your remotes. They will then mimic your actions and even have a cheeky comment to say to you. So next time you're hanging out in the settlement, give the kids a wave or a salute, or even do some jumping jacks with them. If your group find itself with a bit of free time for mucking around, try linking your drones together. The same way you can send your healing drone to help a teammate, you can actually get them to link to other drones instead. It's nothing game breaking that I know of, and after really quick testing it didn't seem to increase healing by much. That was also tested with pretty basic beta builds, so probably worth trying again later in the game. Either way, it's good for some entertainment. You can link them all to a single leader drone, which is actually quite funny, because once the leader drone dies, the others freak out and fly around like headless chicken. Lastly, if you really want to win a game of skirmish, it's easy. All you have to do is live in New Zealand, or team up with friends from here, and spend 10 minutes looking for opponents. When the game gets bored of looking, it'll still load you into a round. Now all you need to do is run around for a bit, acting like a skirmish boss until the game realises what it's done and ends the round. Boom. An automatic and easy victory. Now this won't exactly do any favours for your kill to death ratio, but it will help improve your wins versus losses, and there will probably be an award for not dying. So, uh, you're welcome.